In these videos, I'm going to be going through math, physics, and engineering practice problems. If you need help with any of your courses or you want access to extra practice problems, check out my website linked below. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at constructive and destructive interference. So let's review a little bit about what we know before we take a look at a problem. So let's take a look at a traveling wave. We know that the wavelength is going to be related to the speed of the wave and the frequency with this equation. So in this one, we have lambda as the wavelength in meters, v as the speed of sound in meters per second. So in this one, we're going to be talking about sound waves. So v could be the speed of the wave, but for sound, we'll say it's going to be the speed of sound. And f is going to be the frequency in hertz. Now, if we have two sources that are emitting sound waves that are near each other, what's going to happen is those two sound waves are going to crash into each other. And we know that from superposition, we can say that the total sound that you'll hear is going to be sound wave one plus sound wave two. And that's going to be important for coming up with our equations for constructive and destructive interference. So let's take a look at what happens when we take two speakers, we connect them to the same source, and we have them emit the same frequency that is in phase. So let's imagine that we are a person standing in between these two speakers, and we want to know where the sound is going to be the loudest and where it's going to be the quietest. So constructive interference, that's where the sound waves are going to add together. You're going to hear a loud sound. Destructive interference, that's where the sound waves are going to cancel each other out, so you'll hear a quiet sound. So we've labeled on our diagram here D1 and D2. So D1 is going to be the distance between the person and speaker number one, and D2 is going to be the distance between the person and speaker number two. Now, if we're looking for places where constructive interference is going to happen, we can use this equation. So let's take a look at where this equation comes from. We have D2 minus D1 is equal to N lambda, where N is any integer. So what that means is if the difference between the two distances is equal to some multiple of the wavelength, that's going to give us constructive interference. So what's happening there is we found a location where those two waves have lined up perfectly so that they're going to add together. For destructive interference, our equation looks really similar, except instead of n, we have n minus a half. So our equation for destructive interference is going to be d2 minus d1 is equal to n minus a half lambda. And so what we're saying here is if the difference between those two distances is going to be half a wavelength off, then those waves will be sort of out of sync and they will cancel each other out. So let's take a look at an actual problem so we can see how these are used. In this one, we have the following diagram shows two speakers that are both connected to the same source. The speakers emit a sound with a frequency of 421 hertz and are in phase. Take the speed of sound in air to be 340 meters per second. A person is standing at the location labeled X. What locations of X will the person experience constructive interference? And what locations will the person experience destructive interference? So what they're saying is there's going to be certain locations between speaker one and speaker number two where constructive and destructive interference are going to happen. So we want to find all the locations where those are going to take place. So first things first is they gave us the frequency, but we really want the wavelength. So let's use that equation that we wrote before to convert that over into our wavelength. So we have the speed of sound of 340 meters per second and the frequency of 421 hertz. So that gives us a wavelength of 0 0.808 meters. Now let's bring up our equation for constructive interference. So we have D2 minus D1 is equal to N times lambda. So just notice on the diagram, they have D2 labeled on the left speaker and D1 labeled as the right speaker. So that means that D2 is just going to be X and D1 is going to be 3 minus X. Now the other thing we have to keep in mind is at this point, we don't know what values of N we need to use to get the values of x that we're looking for. But what we do know is that we're looking for locations of x that are in between the two speakers. So that means x should be between 0 and 3. So what we'll do is we'll take that equation and we'll rearrange it for x as a function of n. And then we'll just plug in values of n until we get all the numbers that we can between 0 and 3. So if we start to solve for x, we'll get 2x minus 3 is equal to n times lambda. And then getting x all by itself, we'll have 3 plus n lambda over 2. So let's take a look at that for a second. If we plug in n is equal to 0, we'll get 3 plus 0 over 2, which will give us 1.5 meters. 
So if n is 0, that's going to give us an x value where we are exactly in between these two speakers. So that means what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to plug in positive values of n and negative values of n so that we can get all the values of x that are between 0 and 3. And we'll just keep going in the negative direction until we get below 0, and we'll keep going in the positive direction until we get above 3. So I've gone ahead and calculated all these, and what we find is that n will give us values of x that are between 0 and 3, when n is between negative 3 and positive 3. So I've just included the ones where we kind of go out of bounds here. So n is negative 4, gives us negative 0.115. We can just reject that value. And same with n is equal to 4, gives us 3.115. We'll reject that one as well. So that means our final answer here for the values of x for constructive interference are going to be 0 0.29, 0 0.69, 1.10, 1.50, 1.90, 0 1.90, 2.31 and 2.71. So those are going to be the locations where if you're standing there, you're going to hear the sound is a little bit louder than the other locations because those two waves are perfectly in sync so that they're adding together at those points. Now let's do the same thing but, but for destructive interference. So our equation is going to look similar except instead of n, we're going to replace that with n minus a half. So now we've got d2 minus d1 is equal to n minus a half lambda. And we can follow the same steps here. So we've got d2 as x, d1 as 3 minus x. And same as before, we don't know what values of n to use here, but we do know that our x has to be between 0 and 3. So if we take our equation and rearrange that for x, we'll get x is equal to 3 plus n minus a half times lambda over 2. Now we can do the same as before and plug in values of n until we find x values that go out of bounds. So we find that when n is equal to negative 4, we get x is negative 0.317, and when n is equal to positive 5, we get x is 3.317. So all the values of n between negative 3 and positive 4 are going to give us values of x that we can use for our destructive interference. So what we end up with is the values of x for destructive interference are 0.09, 0 0.5, 0 0.89, 1.3, 1.7, 2.11, 2.5, 2.51 and 2.91 meters. So those are going to be the locations where if you're standing there, you're going to hear a sound that is really quiet because those two sound waves are kind of half a wavelength offset from each other. And so they're going to cancel each other out. So when we're solving these problems, just keep in mind that in this one we looked at, this was a one dimensional problem. So we're only moving in a straight line. You can imagine that this can be quite a bit harder if you have uh, a situation where it's two-dimensional where you've got the speakers which are in 2D and then the person is walking in 2D. Um, it gets a lot harder to come up with your equations for D1 and D2 and then to solve for X can be a bit tricky. Uh, but this procedure is still the same. What you're looking for for constructive interference is places where the difference between the distance is some multiple of the wavelength. And then for destructive interference, we're looking for locations where the difference between those distances is going to be half a wavelength off. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer those as soon as I can.